Hello, Keith Savage here to welcome you to The Mechanist Lair. Usually I don't talk over my tour videos because I feel like the work should stand on its own. But in this case, I have a lot of complicated things to show you, and I think it will clarify things if I explain just a little. This isn't your ordinary mechanist lair. This lair is more rust devil than vault dweller. Although, as you can see, my vault dweller did use some vault tech items. All of this was mainly built as a blind to hide the back of my champion's board. I think it really enhances the entrance and sort of hides what's really going on down here. It's typical with uh, vaults. I'm going to stop talking for a bit so you can take in the magnificence of the Mechanist Lair. Actually, I'll be back later. Have you ever wondered where raiders get their endless supply of pipe pistols? Start tracking down some robots? Tracking multiple signals could be real trouble. I hope those robots aren't giving you too much trouble. Don't worry, I'll take care of them. Thanks. You have no idea how relieved I am that you are doing this. I like doing her radiant quest for the robot mods because I'm playing a character without the science perk. Getting new robot mods is hard. I can't just make them. I have to scrounge them. But that's cool because that's part of the character.
Yes, I have wild subterranean Brahmin roaming the halls. Some got inside centuries ago, and now they breed in the sublevels. What can you do? These are my storage units. They store the weapons that the Weapon Forge makes. The factory floor is divided into two departments, one for weapons, one for everything else. Clearly, raiders have a preference for pistols. I, of course, need an endless supply to fly Corvegas around the Commonwealth. The belt of the Weapon Forge has this diverter that sends approximately half of the weapons to the storage unit up above and the other half to the storage unit down below. This is mainly because I wanted to play with diverters and programming because they don't always work just like this. This is set up with an interval switch and a logic gate to open and shut at precise intervals. And the lights flash along with it. Another thing that's very important is, apparently you have to always reset your weapon forge. I want to make pipe pistols, but it's going to try to make 10 millimeters. So here I am, resetting it. Now that we're all set up, I can think of no better companion to throw the first switch than my buddy, Porter Gage. Take it away, Gage. Go check that out. Yeah, okay. Okay, Bob. Hey. Yeah, what's up? Check it out. Sure thing. Yeah, all right. Now that we're done with weapons, let's move over to department number two. Everything else. That would include clothes, armor, food, miscellaneous items, and fireworks. I arranged all the mills in tiers 
so that the ones above drop their items onto the belts below so that they eventually will all feed into one container. This is the clothing mill here. It is the base belt upon which everything else drops. Here is the armor mill just above. It has a short belt that feeds directly onto the clothes belt. The concrete half wall you see is to prevent the armor belt's items from shooting over the clothes belt. And no, it doesn't make Black Ops chess pieces. I just had to put a lot of things on the belts for show. Next tier up, we have the food processor, currently programmed to make sugar bombs. Above it, we have the miscellaneous items builder. It's currently set up to make Vault-Tec lunch boxes, mainly because it only requires three steel for a lunch box. Let me give you a really good look. There we go. Okay, the miscellaneous is up top. It drops down onto the food below. Around here on this side, we have the fireworks down there. Although technically, it's pyrotechnics with a belt full of lovely clear weather shells for Somerville Place and Murkwater. And sadly, no, the food processor will not make you ice-cold Gwinnett Pilsner. But I do have the machine that will. He lives at County Crossing. This department has two modes, automatic and manual. This switch here on the wall controls the automatic. It turns on everything at once. Hey. Yeah? What is it? All five mills will make as much as they can until they run out of components. Check it out. Sounds like a plan. The manual mode is controlled by pressure plates, and depending on how I wire those plates up, they can control any one of the mills or There's several. That's the last of the armor going by on the belt. That machine runs dry pretty quick because it requires a lot of heavy duty components, ballistic fiber, etc. Up here is my gantry where I keep a pressure plate to control them. It's a good spot to look out over several of the belts at once. Unfortunately, it doesn't make the best place to uh, view everything because of all the obstructions. But that's why I made them all out of mesh. Here to the left, you can see where I made a glitch monstrosity where I had to put picket fencing and wire fencing and uh, metal wall in to try to prevent stuff from falling off the belt completely. And it works. Along with a glass wall in the back, it pretty much prevents everything from falling off the belt. I have had one or two spills, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was with nothing. It's a bit dark back here, so I'm gonna turn on my light. And you get to see how old Rusty gets a nice decal from the decal on the floor. I just wanna show you how the conveyor storage unit works. It will actually count stuff as it comes in for you. In this case, we're out of the components to make armor, but it's still making um, clothes, lunch boxes, and clear weather shells.
as you can see, the wall and fencing glitched in here pretty nicely. And it does indeed work. Almost everything stays on the belt. It was one of those fortunate accidents where the unplanned turned out to be better than the planned. I really like how the mirror ball light shines on this corrugated wall. Take a good look and listen out for the talking lunchbox. I honestly have no idea how that happened. It sounds like one of my robot provisioners, but how he fell and hurt his leg inside the lair at the exact second the lunchbox fell, I have no idea. Now that all mills are shut down because they're out of components, I just want to give you a good look at everything we've made. But remember that a lot of these items were not made by the mills, I just put them on the belts for show. <laughs> 